let's talk about Mar Hildreth H detector. In this case, we are going to make use of second derivative. So far, we have seen uh, the use of single derivative only. And for when we are using single derivative or first derivative, we saw that we were looking for maxima and minima. Wherever we have like a peak or a dip, we were saying that, okay, that's an edge. And if you look at this uh, sample plot from like one of the previous slides, uh, we can see that there's a, there are like two edges here in, in the signal. And if we represent that as a one dimensional function, it will look something like this. And if you compute like a, a first order derivative of the signal, this will be the output response. Okay. And I think we have uh, gone through like how we got this curve. Let me know if you want me to go uh, through this again. And similarly for this, we'll get something like this. And in this case, you can see we are looking for these peaks and these dips. So we know there is an edge over here and there's an edge over here and these two peaks are uh, or dips are corresponding to these two edges now in case of second derivative so what will happen is you will first compute the first order derivative then you will again perform first order derivative of this first order derivative that will give you second order derivative and it will look something like this uh, on the bottom in this case what's going to happen instead of looking at peaks and uh, uh, these reverse peaks you'll have to look for zero crossings, all right? So what zero crossings mean is whenever your signal is actually crossing the zero value or this, the x is at zero. Okay, so in this case, we can see there's a zero crossing over here, which corresponds to this edge. And there is a zero crossing over here, again, which corresponds to this edge. All right, so now we move from looking for maxima minima to looking for zero crossings. And that's the only difference. And of course, there are like more steps to compute. So let's directly jump into the steps we have in uh, Mar Hildreth Edge Detector. The first step is obvious, like we want to smoothen out the image. And earlier we were using a box filtering or an average filtering. Uh, in this algorithm, uh, the inventors use Gaussian filter. And then they applied Laplacian to approximate the second order derivative. Okay, this is a widely used operator. We'll quickly uh, go over this, uh, what this operator is. And this is kind of uh, approximation of second order derivative. Once we have that output, we will uh, try to find zero crossings. And the idea is again, we will do in both directions, uh, in x direction and y direction to find these. And once we have those, we'll say, okay, these are the uh, identified edges. Okay, so these three are the main steps in this algorithm. In Gaussian smoothing, you already know, I think we have covered this a lot. You will have your input image. You will have a Gaussian filter. You can just perform this, uh, perform this filtering operation. And you know that like this is a Gaussian, uh, 2D Gaussian curve. This is the discrete form. This is the actual filter we use. And that's the standard Gaussian equation uh, for two-dimensional uh, filter. Now to compute the uh, Laplacian, what we do is, given the Gaussian, two-dimensional Gaussian is, we actually compute second order derivative and this is partial uh, second order derivative in x direction and this is like the again partial second order derivative in y direction and we just add these okay so this is like how we uh, compute the uh, laplacian so uh, be careful about like these symbols uh, because we have seen that uh, the inverted is actually used for gradient right that's how we represent this when we compute two dimensional gradient so that's different from this operator which is kind of second order derivative so the difference is like the dimensionality and the order of derivative, and it's just flipped. All right, so let's now, let's now try to understand what this zero crossing is. So we can have four different variations for zero crossings, and zero crossing is basically whenever your signal is crossing that axis. All right, and the signal might go from a positive value to a negative value. Again, the signal might go from positive to negative, but you might have a value at zero as well. And you can have just the reverse, right? You can go from negative value to positive value. And again, you can go from negative to positive value and also have a value at zero. So these four different conditions we will see uh, when we try to find these zero crossings. Now, since we are operating in discrete steps, so everything is discretized, right? We are not using continuous signals when we are performing filtering. So what we can do is we can compute the slope of zero crossing. 
And if we have a zero crossing like A and negative, negative of B, we can just add these two values, A plus B. And if you take the magnitude, that is going to give you the slope. And the intuition behind this is, since the space is discretized, so when you're moving from value A to B, okay, so this is the function response. But if you will look at the domain, since this is discretized, you're actually moving in one step. Okay, it might be going from zero to one or one to two, whatever it is, the difference in, uh, difference in domain is going to be one. And if that's the case, then you know that how to compute a slope. Slope is just like your, your movement in the y direction, in the y-axis that, that you can call like delta y and your movement in the x direction that you call delta x. So usually the slope is given by delta y over delta x and your delta y is essentially adding these two values, a plus b, and your delta x is equals to one because you're moving like in, in unit steps. And that's how you can compute like slope of a zero crossing. All right. So if you have to mark like whether it's an edge or not, you just compute the slope of the zero crossing. And it's kind of giving you like how fast the signal is changing. If it's changing like very fast, then it will have a very high slope, like a, like, like a very vertical edge, right? And if you, if you try to reduce the slope, then it's kind of reducing the value, right? So it's kind of still, the, uh, still a zero crossing, but not a very high magnitude. So what we do is we try to determine whether it's a zero crossing or not based on the slope of uh, this zero crossing itself. Okay, so now if you, if, you, if you think about this, earlier we thought, okay, now we have zero crossing, then it might be better than finding the maxima and minima. That's not the case. Because even if you compute single derivative, you still need a threshold to say that whether this is a maxima or minima, whether it's an edge or not. And the it's the same situation here, even if you compute a double derivative or a Laplacian, we, to be able to say that whether this zero crossing is an edge or not, you still need a threshold on the slope. So if a slope is not very high, you will say it's not an edge. Okay, so that parameter is actually not changing when you move from single derivative to second derivative. All right, so let's see how we can uh, compute this Laplacian of Gaussian. This is also called a uh, LOG operator. Uh, so what will happen is uh, this is your Gaussian, this is your input image, you perform filtering, and this is your LOG operator. And you know, like this is uh, associative, or you can say commutative. You can first perform, like you can compute the Laplacian of your Gaussian first, and then you can filter uh, filter the image. So again, you are trying to save some steps here. And your uh, this is your like two dimensional Gaussian, and if you compute the uh, the Laplacian operator, um, again this is going to be the uh, equation. I'm not going to go through this. Okay, so that's fine. It's not important for this course whether you understand like how to go from this point to this point. Just understand like uh, what uh, what Laplacian of Gaussian is. So I think that that's sufficient. Okay, so if you don't understand how to go from this step to this step, that's that's fine. Now this uh, you have seen like how your uh, Gaussian kernel looks like, and this is like what your Laplacian kernel will look, uh, will, will look like. Okay, so this is kind of an inverted hat, and uh, if you just flip it like it will be like a giant hat and if you look at this it's kind of the the value of this kernel is actually zero it's slightly increasing and then it's it's suddenly going down okay and then again going up so it's kind of symmetrical as well and this is basically like when you try to plot this equation you will get something like this but of course for filtering we can't use this we'll have to discretize this we'll have to get discrete values so I will show you like what uh, those discrete values look like. Okay, so for normal edge detection, you know th uh, that like you will have uh, a signal like this, there might be some noise and you can perform like smoothing. So this is like uh, already like computed uh, derivative on your Gaussian filter. And when you apply it on, the, uh, on that, yeah, it's going to give you this edge. And again, as we have discussed earlier, you find like maxima or minima to determine whether it's an edge or not. Uh, for uh, one for the for first order derivative, but for LOG operator it's different. You'll have to find the uh, zero crossings, and this is like uh, a two dimensional like LOG filter. Okay, so if you if you quickly check these values, similar to like your uh, Gaussian or filtered Gaussian operator, you can see that the border values are actually close to zero, and the idea is you don't want to pay too much attention like to the uh, distant values, which are far away from the center. 
And one interesting uh, pattern you can look is it's very close to zero, but as you come closer to the center, it's actually slightly rising. So it's roughly uh, 0.1, but then again, it's going negative, right? So there's a huge dip at the center. And if you if you visualize like the inverted um, the Mexican hat I showed you, this kind of resembles uh, that that visualization because at the center we had a huge dip. But before going from positive to complete dip, we do have some small positive values. All right.